Hi everyone and welcome back to The Rooftop, the home of good news worth shouting about, where we share positive stories about issues that matter and campaigns that make a difference. I'm Tom York and this is episode 8 of Rooftop TV. Now, before we focus on the positive news, we want to take a moment to reflect on what has been a very emotional and challenging time for many of us this past week. I'm joined today by the editor of The Rooftop, Simon Francis, who has an important message that we want to share with you. Hi, Simon. Thanks, Tom. Um, yeah, so we set up The Rooftop to create a platform about to share positive news worth shouting about, about people from all, all walks of life. Um, but um, sadly, for the first time in, in two years, um, we've had some unacceptable, frankly racist uh, comments posted to um, news stories that we shared on our, our Facebook page. So the story in question um, was about a woman who's risen to the top of her profession, um, that she's risen to the top of the legal profession, which is generally very male dominated, we felt was really um, good news, and that she will be the first person um, to wear a hijab uh, whilst being a judge uh, made it for us a, a really positive news story uh, and that's what attracted some of the um, the racist comments so for the first time in two years we actually had to respond making it clear um, that you know racism is totally um, unacceptable that this happened at the same time as the George Floyd story was an, an, a developing in America uh, really served to remind the whole editorial team that, that racism, sadly, is a reality not just in America, but also uh, in the UK and indeed uh, around the world. Um, and so for, for the first time ever, we wrote uh, an editorial um, letter um, yesterday, which uh, was, was published. And what has been positive, though, is to see the, the support that we've had for that letter, um, the support from the rest of the community for um, the, the female judge, and also to see um, the level of support for yesterday's uh, protest by um, Stand Up to Racism, which saw tens of thousands of people right around the country take a knee in solidarity with the protesters in America. So we'll continue to stand up to racism too, and continue to share positive news stories about people, regardless of their, of their ethnicity, or for that matter, um, their disability, their sexual orientation, their gender identity, their age, um, whatever their background, um, we'll continue to share their positive news worth shouting about. Thanks, Simon. Now, as Simon touched on there, we're proud to celebrate positive news from people from all walks of life here at the rooftop. And as many of you will know, the month of June is Pride Month, which is a month dedicated to celebrating LGBT plus communities all around the world. So today, I want to shine a spotlight on a very special person who has been keeping me and my neighbours entertained during the lockdown here in Yule in Surrey. Their name is Carly, and they have been belting out hits from their doorstep every week since the lockdown began. Here's a little clip of Carly performing on VE Day. Now the whole damn bus is cheering. Yay! I can't believe I see a hundred yellow ribbons around up to I'm coming home. Now, I'm pleased to welcome to the rooftop Carly, Surrey's singing sensation. Hi, Carly. Thanks for Hi, joining Al. us. So, what made you decide to start performing for your neighbours? Well, I'm a bit of an exhibitionist and I always want a good enough reason to go out um, or come out. Um, so, and some of the people know about me. Uh, but the reason of the VE day and me singing on Thursday nights, um, I thought I'd go out and, like, you know, kind of wake them all up. Fantastic. Were you worried at all about any negative reactions that you might get? Well, because, um, because I sing on Thursday nights for the clapping for the nurses, 
um, and everybody else, really, because I bring everybody else into it. You know, it's, it's the carers, the nurses, the the, the transport people, everybody. Um, uh, I just, I'm more worried about the weather than I was about people's reactions. So I just go out there and do it. And I get quite a good following as well. So with it being Pride Month, the time when we celebrate how things have changed and we look towards the future, how do you think attitudes and perceptions have changed over the years? Well, my local community... Um, now that I did my singing on Thursdays, they kind of more understanding and accepting. But I think in general, I think there needs to be more education regarding, um, you know, trans and gays and everybody. Um, and everybody's in one category, whether you're tranny like me or whether you're gay or, bi or, or lesbian or anything, you're all put in the same cart. You know, you're odd. And, and I think that needs to change because a lot of us are really quite a friendly bunch. So talking about Pride, I know that you've been involved in Pride parades and Pride marches in the past. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I've got, um, I've got a YouTube video, which I did probably in 2005, I think it was, where I walked for an hour and 50 minutes in amongst crowds, thousands and thousands of people. And a lot of them waving flags, a lot of them being accepting. Whether Joe Public was in there, I don't know. But it was all the people that are linked to people having fun and festivities and things. And I was cheered and stopped by people having photographs taken. It was fabulous. And it didn't rain, which is really quite good. And I think it's fantastic and really inspiring to know that somebody in an area that I wouldn't consider to be very culturally diverse you know it's sleepy suburban small mm. town of yule and i think you are a really powerful voice and a powerful inspiration to to many so credit to you thank you i've been doing it for a long time dare i ask how long you've been performing i've been faffing around dressing up since 30 years ago and i'm now 75 75 in september wow that's incredible well thanks carly for joining us and for keeping me smiling these past weeks you're welcome now for our final story sarah colombini is here with news about an organization that is taking action to improve road safety hi sarah Hi Tom. During the pandemic, people are being encouraged to cycle and many UK cities and towns are already putting infrastructures in to help cyclists. However, research shows that cyclists are overrepresented in serious crashes. In 2018, the road casualty statistics for the UK showed that more than 11 cyclists a day suffered a serious injury or fatality. The Road Safety Trust, a charity dedicated to making the UK roads safer, have funded Swedish insurance company Folksum to test a range of UK helmets to help improve cyclist safety on the roads. In total, 27 cycling helmets were tested, with 23 available in the UK. Five physical tests were conducted, two shock absorbent tests and three oblique impact tests. Eight helmets were given the recommended label, including four that are readily available in the UK market. The Road Safety Trust hopes that these tests will help consumers in purchasing safer helmets and that helmet manufacturers will raise their game and bring to market new helmet models that are safer. Thanks, Sarah. Well, that's all we've got time for this week. You can find out more about all of today's stories and all the other positive news this week on our website, therooftop.news, and on Facebook and Instagram at News from the Rooftop. I'm Tom York, and this is The Rooftop, the home of good news worth shouting about. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time.